So I want to get kind of bigger picture because I have heard you. I think obviously you have a philosophical bent and I have heard you talk about psychopaths. And I don't know if you, if you mean the people who are trying to run the world or people who, um, maybe you may be vulnerable to, if you don't pursue privacy, what do you mean by that? Well, let me ask you this, Monica, could you define a psychopath if I asked you? What do you think well, a psychopath is? I can try. Is? Uh, I Go feel ahead. like I, if I recall correctly, I think, uh, maybe it's a sociopath, but someone who basically does not have a conscience. Right. Exactly. Yes. So my understanding is that a psychopath and a sociopath are, are the same. And yeah. that's information that I get from a really fascinating book, which is a serious red pill book called Without Conscience, The Disturbing World of Psychopaths Among Us by wow. uh, uh, Robert Hare. Now that is a spine chilling book. That's what started me. That's what started me along this path of investigating psychopaths so a psychopath is you're right or a sociopath is somebody who um it seems for reasons of biology uh does not have a conscience right does not have the ability to have empathy now you say okay well that's bad but how bad is that well you can't have the non-aggression principle if you don't have empathy because you can't imagine somebody else who has rights and interests and values right. you can't have the golden rule if you don't have empathy you can't have the social contract. You can't have any of these things. Psychopaths, and uh, there's another uh, uh, lady who who wrote a book called The Sociopath Next Door. Yes, uh, yes, Martha I've seen Stout. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she says that uh, in her language, let's see here, um, that a psychopath um, has altered processing of emotional stimuli at the level of the cerebral cortex. In other words, mm. this is a biological phenomenon. There have been empirical studies that have showed that psychopaths compared to normal people uh, do do not associate uh, emotional words, um, do not have a, a different uh, sense of emotional words compared to regular words. Um, sorry, that was a little bit confusing. So uh, when going through different words, the emotional words are supposed to spark something in normal people, and they do. But with psychopaths, that's not the case. They, all, they also did a study where um, they lined people up to give them, administer a shock. And the regular people, in anticipation, uh, their heart rate went up, all this kind of stuff. For psychopaths, nothing. There was no change. So these are biologically different creatures wearing human faces. I'm intended to think, if one were to think theologically, that these are not actually, um, these people do not have souls, um, <laughs> is how I would put it. And their interest, Monica, is exploiting people in power, in harming people, because that's the only enjoyment. When you don't have conscience, <sighs> when you don't have empathy, that's the only thing left is the ascent to power. So it makes sense that while psychopaths are about 2% of the population, which is a pretty That's shocking. A lot of high, people. Yeah, you go into your local Safeway and there's a psychopath in there. Um, uh, but Right, that's uh, but, one so, in 50 people. Right, so 2%, but they contribute to 50% of serious crimes. Hmm. So now here's here's the thing, Monica. Psychopaths. Now, how did, how did, would you know that? How are they diagnosed with that? I just am curious because you do seem well, to have. Well, yes. Well, the, these sense. these are these are statistics that I've I've gathered from the books that I've described. Right. Okay. Um, and so they they've run these tests. I you know I guess I I yeah. trust them to that extent. But, yeah. Um. And they you know a, a huge percentage of the prison population is psychopaths. So if you want to right. Study okay. Yes. That that up, would be a way. Yeah. Um. But okay. So the big picture here. So. If that is if that is who you are, you're a psychopath. Your interest is in power control. Um, there's some interesting kind of theorizing about the psychopathic mind. They're endlessly bored, right? They're endlessly bored. They need stimulation. They tend to uh, go after drugs and 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 violence and sex and all these kind of things. But they also end up in corporations. They also end up in government because these are natural places for their personalities. Yeah. And think about this. We applaud people sometimes for making that tough decision, right? Um, somebody had to make the decision to drop the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? Uh, we have to put aside the emotional stuff and make the decision or, yeah, other kind of situations. Now, I'm not saying that the, the people who did that specific thing were psychopaths, but you can see all kinds of examples. Now, Hitler's, I don't know if Hitler was a psychopath, but I believe that the people immediately underneath them, Himmler and such, probably were. Stalin? 
may have been a psychopath. These are people who, when they're in positions of power, can contribute to the alteration of history.